Good morning again, everybody. So it's uh, Memorial Day weekend, right? Like we've been talking about, and we've been um, we've been as a country kind of celebrating what Memorial Day is for for a lot of years. It actually began uh, back in 1866 in Waterloo, New York, where they started placing flowers on the graves um, of of soldiers. And then in 1868, uh, May 30th was declared as uh, Memorial Day, and uh, since World War One, Memorial Day has been uh, on on that the Monday that we celebrated at, and and been there to honor Americans who have died in in wars as they um, have served this country, and then that's that's what we do, right? So that's what Memorial Day is about. It's a uh, um, it's this time to remember, and there's lots of ceremonies that go on, and and flags that decorate graves around the country, and. Um, and services at the, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, great things that happen in, in ways that we, um, we set some time aside to uh, remember those who have uh, served and, and lived and died on our, our behalf. And that's, that's what Memorial Day is, right? It's more than just a, a three-day weekend. Uh, I think we get that, right? I think that uh, most Americans understand that um, it, it was, uh, it's a day that we honor those, those people and that, that because of them we have this free nation strong nation and a nation that, that's worth uh fighting for and that's 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 something that's that is uh, is worth celebrating and, and we got to remember a little bit that because of what they've done those people have gone before us that's why we're here today that's why we're able to be gathering in a church that's why we're able to preach the word of god freely it's why we're able to uh pursue a life of of happiness and prosperity in our own way and and um and that's fantastic so as we, we kind of get ready to, to remember on Memorial Day and as we kind of start to, to prepare for that, we've also got to uh, uh, remember about Jesus who died for us, right? The, uh, the big sacrifice, right? He, he, uh, he, he set the, the, the stage for that, right? He fought the, enemy, the armies of, of hell. He died for us and, and he sacrificed himself for us. So as we start to get ready for Memorial Day, remember all that, that those have done for us. Let's also uh, remember on Memorial Day and today uh, what Christ did for us. So there's a few a few things, a few ways, a few ways that we celebrate, a few day, ways that the Memorial Day um, is is celebrated. And as we talk about those who who've gone before us, we share stories of of men and women who have fought. Uh, we also can reflect on Jesus. And there's a lot of similarities there, right? There's a a likeness to how how our military and how Christ have uh, served and died for us uh, in, in a way that we should honor. Now we we do that um, every every Sunday, right? When we gather for Christ, it's like that memorial of Jesus. Every Sunday we get together and we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. We come in here, we praise Him, we worship Him. We know that He is God, and we lift Him up. So let's just kind of continue that today, and let's do it with this. This thought of Memorial Day weekend in mind. If you got your Bible, turn it to Matthew chapter 28. We're going to talk about a few passages of Scripture. I want to read this one specifically this morning. The other two uh, we've, we've read kind of recently, uh, and, and we'll see how they apply here. But Matthew chapter 18 uh, talks about, about this. And what we've, uh, we've got to remember is that, that Jesus did die for us. And in Memorial Day, we, we do uh, mourn the loss of people who have Served. We've also uh, got to be aware that that Christ died as well, right? So as we mourn the loss of Christ, as we we realize that He died on a cross for us, one thing we've got to realize is that He did that for us, right? That that He did it for for you and me. That He He literally gave His life so that you and I uh, could be free, free from sin and free from death, and have eternal life with Him. The really amazing thing about what Jesus did and that sacrifice he made is that even if there was just one, even if it was just us, he would have done that, right? Even just you, he would have done that. Even if it was just one person left, he would have done that. And that's what he talks about here in Matthew chapter 18. So I just want to read a couple of verses there, and starting in verse 12. This is a parable we've all heard. Matthew chapter 18, verse 12. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly, I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than the ninety-nine that did not go astray. Even so, it is, is it not the will of your Father who, who is in heaven that one of these little ones should 
perish. So here's what Jesus is saying, right? Shepherd has 100 sheep. One goes astray. He's going to go find that one. If there's one sinner left, Jesus would have given his life for that person. That's, that's who Jesus is, right? I think we all kind of understand this, this idea of, of one uh, and, and, then, and then kind of changing things to, to go find the one. So the other day, um, my dryer stopped drying, probably because I'm really bad about taking the lint out all the time so it, it, and socks clog things up. Anyway, I'm taking the dryer apart to try to make it work. And it's got a bunch of bolts on the back, taking the bolts off. Get it all cleaned out, putting it back in. I've got all the bolts set in, and I'm starting to tighten the bolts. And as I'm tightening the bolts, one falls out, and it rolls underneath the dryer, and right, it's lost. Now, I could have put all the bolts in, tightened them all up, and moved on with life. It probably would have been fine. One bolt on the thing is, is not going to stop it, but, but this, that's not what I did, right? I set the tools aside. All these other ones needed the, the wrench to tighten them up. Set the tool aside, got everything out of the way to try to find that one bolt. That's how Jesus is for us, right? Sometimes we're the one that falls and we go under the dryer. Sometimes we're the ones that need the wrench to be tightened. But sometimes if that one is lost, Jesus is going to go and seek that out. He did that for all of us, right? He, he came and found us. We were those that were lost, and Jesus did it for us. So if we were the one, Jesus still would have been on the cross. Right? If we were the one that had gone astray, one that had wandered away, Jesus will still come and find us. And we know what it's like, right, to have uh, to to experience loss. We we know what it's like to uh, to to experience loss in a, in a what seems like a permanent way. We also know what it's like sometimes to, to experience loss in what seems like not so permanent way. Right? Um, anybody ever lost a, a kid that you were watching? Yeah. So the other day at the baseball game, Jonah, Adam's playing baseball. Jonah's at the park, playing at the park, right? So I go to get him, and Jonah likes to do this thing where he likes to be sneaky and spy on people. So I know Jonah's in the park, but then all of a sudden he's disappeared, and he's behind trees, and he's hiding, and he thinks it's funny, but there for a split second, right, when I couldn't see him go from tree to tree, that's incredibly frightening, right? I think that's how Jesus feels about us too sometimes. It's that, that moment that we're not connecting with him, he feels frightened, He's going to do whatever he can to come and find us. We're that one. And Jesus says here this parable that if 99 are there and, and he's got this 100, he's going to go find and do what he can to find the one. Jesus is going to do that for us. He's going to come and seek us out. He's going to come and find us. He's going to come and, and do what he has to do to get us back into his fold. All right, so as we remember the, the, the loss of Christ, as we mourn the loss of, of Jesus at times, as we realize that Jesus died on a cross for us, remember also that he is doing that for us, that his love is that great, that he did it for us. So as we remember, as we prepare, as we think about Memorial Day and remember Christ, let's remember that, that his death is for us. We also remember, though, the life of Jesus, right? That's... Uh, that's how we want to remember people that we lose in this world. That's how we want to remember Jesus as well. If you remember the, the story we read uh, just after Easter and, and about the road to Emmaus, and Jesus is, he just kind of shows up there and these guys are talking and they're, uh, they're speaking about who Jesus was and how he lived and, and, and how all of this just seemed so foreign to them. And then Jesus opened up and, and told them who he was. The big part of that was these two men uh, mourning the loss of Jesus by talking about how he lived, right? That's part of our healing process. Part of how we, we heal is we remember the lives of those who lived, right? We, we see it, right? That's what headstones are for, and that's what uh, uh, celebration is for, and that's what memories are for. So uh, Jesus is the same way, right? He's the same way. We don't have a headstone for Jesus. We, we don't have that, but we can remember his his life, right? We can remember what he taught us in his life. As these men were walking in, uh, on, on the road here, that's what they were doing as well. Jesus set this example, right? He, he lived a life and he wants us to live the same way. How do we celebrate Jesus and what he did for us? How do we remember Jesus? How do we have this memorial for Jesus? We, we look at how he lived and then we try to live that same way. We try to carry that on, right? We try to do the, the same thing. I talked to a, a couple guys this week who uh, are, are kind of struggling. Farmers are getting a little bit nervous, if you haven't noticed that, right? And, and they're trying to figure out what to do. And, and a couple of these guys, are, their fathers, grandfathers had these farms, and they're wondering, is this going to 
how it keeps going. And then what they want to do is continue their family's legacy by doing what's been done for all those generations. Right? That's how they're honoring the ones that have gone before. So how do we honor Jesus? Well, we live as he lived. Right? We, we see what he did in Scripture. We see how he lived in Scripture. We see how he loved and how he cared and how he taught. And then we do the same. We, we want to help remember Jesus and Jesus' life. We, we do it by living for him. Right? We want others to see who he is. We want others to realize how great he is. Then, then that's what we do. Right? And remember that first parable. Right? That, that even if there was one, Jesus would do what he, he could to get to that one. And, and sometimes that path to get to that one is us. What he's called us to do to remember him, to memorialize him, to celebrate him, is to live for him. And we come together in, in church on Sunday, we, we sing, we read, we listen, we pray, but it, it can't stop here. It's got to be how we live our life. We put our faith in him. We put our trust in him. We understand what he is, is trying to teach us throughout every day. And we show the world who Jesus is in our lives by the way that we live. Right? We celebrate him by how we reflect his love. Right? We're also pretty thankful for the sacrifice he made, or we, we should be. Right? And we do that. The first Sunday of every month, what do we do? We have communion service, right? And we have that, that word, in remembrance of me. And we've, we've talked about this, right? It's a, it's a pretty big deal. What Jesus wants us to do is to remember. Remember what he's done. Remember that he made a sacrifice, right? Sometimes I, I think maybe it's easy that we, we forget that, that Jesus went through all of this for us. We, we kind of start to overlook it. We, get, uh, we, we, we read the scripture and we see all that Jesus lived, but we, we miss that very important part, that he did something for us. That sacrifice is extremely important. I, I came across this story this morning and, and I wanted to share it. Uh, it's, it was a few weeks before Christmas in 1917. Uh, the snowy landscapes of Europe were blackened by war. The trenches on one side held the Germans and the trenches on the other side were filled with Americans. It was World War I. The exchange of gunshots was intense. Separating them was a very narrow strip of no man's land. A young German soldier, soldier attempting to cross that no man's land had been shot and become entangled in the barbed wire. He crowd, cried out in anguish. Then, in pain, he continued to whimper. Between the shells, all the Americans in that sector could hear him scream. When one American soldier could stand it no longer, he crawled to the German soldier. When the Americans realized what he was doing, they stopped firing, but the Germans continued. Then a German officer realized what the young man was doing and ordered his men to cease firing. Now there was a weird silence across no man's land. On his stomach, the American made his way to that German soldier and disentangled him. He stood up with the German in his arms and walked straight to the German trenches and placed him in the waiting arms of the comrades. Having done so, he turned and started back to the American trenches. Suddenly, there was a hand on the shoulder of uh, the American and spun him around. There was a German officer who had won the Iron Cross, the highest German honor for bravery. He jerked it off his own uniform and placed it on the American who then walked back to the American trenches. Only when he was safely back in the trenches did they resume the insanity of the war. It's a story of sacrifice. A German soldier, obviously, uh, thankful for the American sacrifice. We're thankful for soldiers' sacrifice. We're thankful for the sacrifice of those who have gone before us. We've got to continue to be thankful for the sacrifice that Jesus gave for us. It's a pretty big deal, right? He literally has our life in his hands, right? And there's no one else that could save us, no one else that could do us, no one else that could carry us across uh, this life and into life everlasting. Only Jesus could do that, and Jesus did. But what it took for him was the ultimate price. He, he couldn't earn it. We can't earn it. He couldn't pay for it any other way than by sacrificing his life. We, we are celebrating heroes tomorrow. We have to remember that we celebrate heroes uh, in, in, in our lives every day if we serve Jesus, right? We are, are free. We are, uh, we're free from the burden of sin. We're free from death only because of what Jesus did for us, and that's what we have to remember. So let's, let's do that. We celebrate tomorrow. Uh, the, the soldiers that have gone before us, those that have sacrificed for us, let's also celebrate Jesus that, that lives in us today. Right? 
remember that, that every day of our lives is showing the world who Jesus is. Every day of our lives is memorializing who Jesus is in our lives. Remember the sacrifice he made. Remember what that means for us. And remember that, that what Jesus has done, no one else could do. All right, so let's, let's celebrate that. Let's not forget about that. Not just today, not just tomorrow, every day of our lives. Let's celebrate that Jesus, even though there was just one, even though it was us, gave it all up to come and find us. Because that's who Jesus is for us. Anybody have anything this morning? All right. Let's sing one more song.